Well, good morning, everyone. This is Lori from Minnesota Realtors. Thank you for joining us today. I'm super excited. We have some of my two of my favorite people in the whole world with us today. We have Shay and Nobu Hata. And I'll just give a quick intro to both of them, and then I'm going to turn over so that they can take it away. Uh, Shay is an Ivy League grad, mom, and residential realtor in Chicago, Illinois, with Berkshire Hathaway. She moved to Chicago in 2012 and then jumped into real estate in a brand new city where she didn't know anyone and was new to real estate. Within three years, she was averaging $30 million a year in real estate and now has a small team consisting of her, a buyer's agent, and four assistants. Shay is passionate about animal rescue as well as making sure every child has access to quality education. Therefore, she donates a portion of each commission to local animal rescue groups and local schools. That's awesome. Nobu is a real, real estate industry tech marketing and sales veteran. Nobu was both formerly a top producing agent and director of industry outreach with NAR, earning accolades in both aspects of real estate. Now a speaker, consultant, tech company mentor, and the husband of a top selling Chicago realtor, Nobu brings tactical tips, tricks, and advice based on real, real business ed execution to help real estate business owners, excuse me, succeed and thrive in a rapidly evolving real estate industry. Now I'll turn it over to you two. Well, thank you. And, and as, uh, but uh, we were in Minnesota for almost a, almost 10, 10 years yeah. before we came out here. So I sold for Dana Realty out there mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, Shay kind of followed my footsteps there in Chicago. We miss you guys. We miss Minnesota. We miss everything about it. Uh, every time we go back there, we miss it even more, right? Yep. Hopefully we're back there for a wedding in June, but, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, parallels about uh, uh, the uh, Illinois market and the Minnesota market in terms of the shelter in place and all the rules that are in place. Uh, you know, it's been kind of strange, hasn't it, Shay? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely been a whole new way to do business, which we'll kind of dive into and talk about, um, you know, and just the changes that we've seen and kind of, I think, the evolution of, of how to do business you know, has changed a lot from when the shelter in place first went into effect, you know, here in Chicago six weeks ago to now, like we've definitely shifted how we're doing things um, to make it better, I think. So we'll talk to you about that a little bit too. Yeah, I think that if we can start focusing on some of the positives that have come out of quarantine, there's been definitely some pluses that, that have been happening. Um, and those are a lot of what we'll be talking about today. But yeah, business as unusual, business as abnormal, I don't know how you want to call it, um, is, is, is there's some aspects that are going to be around to stay, and some, some of it is really good. Um, so let's kind of jump in. Um, and what we don't want to debate on right now is what, essential, what is essential and what is not essential services. You know, that's a huge debate happening within the industry right now. Um, you know, realtors are helping other people move and find homes. You know, they're, you know Shea is at, how many clients have you had that their leases have run out in the middle of all this yeah. and they have to find a place I, to they live? They have to move. Yeah. I mean, and you know, that's the situation that probably a half a dozen of my clients have been in where it's like they have to move or they'll be homeless because their lease has run out. And so we have to find them a new place to live. Uh, you know, and so, uh, you know, it, it is essential in my mind because of that. And, and what's been great about it is that you can still operate your business how, you, how you'd like. Um, there's been definitely some changes happening on the infrastructure systems things about what Shay has been doing, what I've been seeing around the country, and we'll be talking about that. But remember that you know everyone is overwhelmed right now, and, and, and you know, you know this is kind of a weird time, but it's weird for everybody. Um, and feeling overwhelmed is totally cool, um, but figuring out how to be consumer centric right now is as a as a realtor or as a broker owner is in in everyone's best interest right now when we're helping other people with their real estate services. Um, if we can start being decent, uh, even more decent to each other right now, we're all in this together. Uh, that's kind of been, I think, the biggest eye-opening thing that I've been seeing around the country and here in Chicago where, you know, realtors are, are forced now to have phone conversations with each other when it was text and, and emails. You know, calling people again is now in vogue, right? Yeah, and I'm just seeing a lot more cooperation. You know, we were talking about this on a top producer panel the other day with our association in terms of, like, you know, we have a lot of condo buildings here in Chicago and you can't get in right now to do photographs of like the gym and the pool and the lobby and, you know, all those things. So realtors are reaching out to people who've had listings in those buildings mm -hmm. previously and saying, hey, can I buy your photos? And a lot of realtors are saying like, I'm not going to charge you for them, just take them, you know. So in the past, that would have never happened. And now we're seeing a lot more of that types of cooperation 
um, just because we're all trying to get, you know, properties bought and sold and we really have to work together now to make that happen. Yeah, be decent guys, and even more so than, and you know, I know there's a whole Minnesota nights thing. Uh, let's, let's amp it up and start being really cool about it. And it's also, uh, it'd be, we'd be remiss not to say it. It's okay to say no, frankly. Um, Say no to the people that want to bogart your time. Say no to the people who want to uh, make you feel uncomfortable, put you at risk uh, outside of your, uh, your, your, your comfort zone. But how many people have you said no to? Almost everybody, the first two weeks we went in shelter in place, I just didn't personally feel comfortable going out and doing in-person showings at that point, even though we were allowed to. And I just, we reached out to all of our clients and said, we are not doing in-person showings right now. We will ask for video tours and virtual tours and things like that, but we are not doing in-person showings until we could figure out kind of how to safely do it and feel more comfortable. And there's been a couple of clients, we still won't do showings, but we have one client who, um, the person who sits right next to him in the office and he's been having to go in every day was um, diagnosed with coronavirus and he's supposed to be at home on a 14 day quarantine and wanted to go out and see properties. And I was like, no, like, I'm not taking you out to find properties. If you want to find another agent, be my guest, but I'm not putting my health at risk. So, you know, I think you really have to decide for yourself what you're comfortable doing. And that's hard because it, it directly affects our income. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, my health is more important and my family's health is more important. And so you have to remember it is okay for you to say no. Um, you know, and that was a really hard thing for me to do in the first couple of weeks because I'm so used to saying yes and jumping in my car whenever anybody wants to see something. So that was really uncomfortable for me to do. And, and you know, we'll talk about that today. So, you know, in the next hour, we're going to be talking about client care uh, for current clients, current transactions. We're going to talk about people already in the funnel who are, uh, you know, basically have been shut out of in-person showings, um, in-person um, in person uh, consults, things like that. We're going to talk about uh, filling the funnel with uh, with with new leads because you know, at, at, as it stands now, the pent up demand that that is um, going to relieve itself once uh, 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 more and more communities start to ease up on on their um, uh, their their shelter in place rules right. uh, is going to be overwhelming all of us. So I, we need to be prepared about this. And frankly, we need to start thinking about, at least right now, how this is going to affect the fall. Uh, I know here and in most uh, states that I've talked to, most communities I've talked to and Shay has talked to, um, I think a lot of people are prepared for this to happen again in the fall. Uh, so, you know, now is a good time to, to get your business infra infrastructure in place. Um, these are all things that, frankly, we should have been doing for a while. Uh, but but it's a nice time, frankly, frankly, to be at home and to start figuring these things out. We'll talk about that stuff today. Yeah. Uh, you know, more more than anything, you know, to me, I like to focus on the positives. You know, watching the news has been truly bumming. But because if you can kind of see what's happening with brands, with services, with community, with everything that's happening out there, there's been, there's been a lot of good that's been happening with uh, with with, the, with with everyone being in quarantine. Um, I've never seen a time when more people who are stuck at home want to go out there and go hang out with other people now. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. You know, people are yearning for human interaction, which is fantastic for us in real estate. We've been so preoccupied by iBuyers and all this other stuff that we've, we neglect the 90% of people out there who are like, I just want to go out and have a margarita and go eat Mexican food with some, with some of my good friends, and I haven't been able to do that in a while. Right. You seen the same? Yeah, and I think people are craving someone uh, to be, they're craving feeling like somebody cares about them. Yeah. And so that's what we've been really trying to put into our business is, you know, I have been calling, I'm not a phone person, I don't like the phone, you know, so I've been calling every past client that I have, um, you know, or if I have kids texting them sometimes and just saying like, how are you doing? Like, this doesn't have anything to do with real estate, right? Just how are you doing? What do you need? And trying to figure out what it is that they need that I can help them with, you know? Um, you know, for one of our, one of our clients, she needed toilet paper. And so we dropped some toilet paper off for another client. She just had a baby and she's got two other kids under age five and she's, she's having a really hard time at home. So I sent her some gifts from Amazon. You know, I have another client who, um, they thought he was positive for COVID and, uh, same thing. They have two young kids that are twins and a baby and the wife's pregnant with a baby. So I sent out, you know, $50 worth of gifts from Amazon to try to keep them busy to buy the mom time. Right. Um, you know, so I think right now it's just about creating that human interaction and showing people that you care about them, especially your single clients. You know, I think they're having a hard time right now with that lack of human interaction and your elderly clients feeling like they can't go out. So just reaching out to them and saying, 
what can I do for you? Can I go to the grocery store and get you anything? You know, can I send something to your house? Like, how can I help you? And I think that's what's going to be memorable when this transaction ends. And people want to work with people who like them and who've gone out of their way to take care of them during this situation. And then when you, you look and see what's happening on the branding end of things, the, the humanization of brand, I, I've been talking about it for years. Uh, Shay's been doing it in her business. A lot of folks have been doing it in real estate for a while, but this is, you know, when you look on, look on, watch on TV and online and see uh, big brands, you know, like Uber, for example, saying, thank you for not using Uber. Um, stay at home. I mean, it, it, it there's been an adage now where folks have been saying how you treat yourself, your staff, your, your, your employees and other people is going to be how your brand is remembered going forward. I, 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 ask, I absolutely second that. Uh, humanize yourself now more than ever. Uh, that, that's a fantastic opportunity for real estate people. You know, you know get out from behind your, your, your car branding and, and your, your, your pictures from 1995 and say hello uh, to folks and be human in the way you do it. Authenticity, all these things that we've been talking about is finally coming to fruition. Yeah. Like turning off those awful memes about like, could you see yourself quarantined here? Like, yeah. you know, like those kinds of things, like no one cares, like really find that human connection in your social media, in, you know, any emails that you're sending out. It all needs to be about you caring. Uh, the year video is finally happening. Uh, you know, Lori, who's, who's administrating this, uh, <laughs> this, this, this webinar, uh, she's been in uh, education for a while in real estate. It's been the year of video in real estate for about 10 years. Uh, and finally it's actually happening. And people are, um, and you know, you're all taking Zoom classes. And the irony about it is that your clients, you know, I, I'm not selling every day. You know, I, I'm tired of Zoom. I'm tired of all this stuff. Uh, and realtors are still taking. How do I do Zoom uh, uh, web uh, open houses and things like that? Uh, but realize that video is still telling a really good story. And I would start thinking about nailing down video now as video becomes more and more of a bridge from the online world to the offline world. You know, I bought you a camera, we'll talk about it in a second, two years ago. Uh, you're finally using it now. <laughs> right? I never used it. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a second. Yeah. Um, I think the big thing is, is uh, search now. The search season is the thing that really got disrupted more than anything. Um, while you had a lot of people searching, uh, you know, cold weather states like Illinois and, and, Min and Minnesota, people were searching. Uh, uh, online and, and, and going offline quickly. Now all the pent up demand is, is, is staying online. Search season is happening longer and longer. Um, you're gonna see more and more people dream online. Now's the time to start creating content. Now's the time to start uh, thinking about how you're gonna implement video. Now's the time to start thinking about um, how you're going to build mindshare during a time when all of your leads, all of these people, all of your cold, uh, cold and warm folks are online and they're dreaming right now and almost using real estate as an escape. Uh, your clients are doing that right now, right? Yeah, and it's interesting. I saw some, uh, some interesting Zillow stats yesterday where they showed that their online search traffic in Zillow plummeted in March um, when the stay-at-home order started to go into effect around the country, which I actually found interesting. I thought it would have been the opposite, that people would have been online looking at their at the homes more. But I think people were so overwhelmed and so busy that they just didn't. And so their search plummeted dramatically. And in the last two weeks, it skyrocketed up, you know, back above where it was in February when things were more normal, um, you know, and we've seen sort of a similar thing here where our showings in the last week, uh, we weren't getting any showings on our list. Because you can do showings now. You can we do in-person showings, in showings yeah. here in Illinois. I think it's the same thing in Minnesota. Yeah. And so all of a sudden in the last week, our in-person showings have gone up dramatically where I was getting, you know, zero showings before on a property. Now I'm getting six to 10 a week on a property because, you know, our shelter in place order was extended through the end of May. It sounds like yours might be as well. And I think once that happened, people realized like this is going on for the foreseeable future. So let's get back to buying or selling. So just in the past week, we've seen an explosion of people wanting videos of properties, you know, virtual tours, in-person showings, et cetera. And that parallels what Zillow is seeing. So, you know, I think you're, you know, if you're not already seeing that there, you're going to see that soon. Yeah. Uh, the guidance on the unknown, uh, you know, Frankly, most of the real estate transaction is the unknown, you, but you've had empowered consumers the last couple of years driving the boat when it comes to what, you know, what they should and shouldn't be doing when it comes to their realtor relationship. But so much of, uh, of what's happening now is the unknown, you know, processes, systems, and how you're going to go do showings, and how you're going to put a house on the market is, is, is not on the internet anymore. And what you're seeing more and more of are these people calling you up, which has been interesting, or texting you uh, about what they should and shouldn't be doing when it comes to preparing home. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, 
this, this, uh, the consumers being wary of the time used, that's, that's huge, right? You gotta understand that, that while a lot of us realtor uh, folks are tr tr still trying to figure out how this tech works, you know, most of our consumers have been using Zoom in their businesses uh, with their work for the last month. They figured it out already. And they're trying to balance that with real work, you know, offline and their kids, right? I, I, I am exhausted by uh, all these webinars that we have to do um, about how to figure things out that you should have figured out a month ago. Um, and consumers are, are, are almost in the same boat. Have you, t have, you, have you talked to your consumers about how crazy they are with time that they don't have anymore? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think there was a thing going around saying that the average working parent is working three hours longer now every day than they were before this went into place because we're homeschooling and cleaning yeah. and cooking and we have no support. So, you know, I think that, you know, consumers are stressed, they're overwhelmed, they're testy, they're sleep deprived, you know, if they have kids, especially, you know, if they don't, it, you know, it might be a little bit easier and they have more free time. So it's trying to balance what messaging are you sending to people who, you know, have kids who are overwhelmed right now versus what messaging are you sending to people who maybe don't have kids and who have a lot more free time? You know, how are you dividing that content? Because in my world, it's two very different groups in, uh, based on what they need. My clients that don't have kids are calling me, texting me constantly with questions about properties they're seeing online. Whereas my clients with kids, they have no extra time and you know, they don't want me to waste their time. It has to be short, quick, and it's, you know, it, it very targeted. And that's something to think about when you think about content. And, and right now, uh, I'll tell you, the folks who have a dedicated content strategy, so what, uh, doing something that involves uh, marketing, or useful marketing, memorable marketing and branding, things that, that customers have not only thrived, are thriving now, but they've thrived this last winter. You, you didn't have a down season this last winter, right? So no. you, you had, you had uh, the majority of people come out earlier. They, they bought and sold houses with you during the wintertime when, when normally people are hibernating and are killing it right now uh, in terms of that uh, mind share build up towards uh, what you're seeing online with consumers is uh, the light at the end of the tunnel in there, at least in their heads. Right. right? Uh, we're going to talk about all of this stuff today. Right. So let's kind of uh, jump in, Shay. Like there's been a lot of conversation about what folks are cutting out, what folks are putting into their businesses. Uh, can you really talk quickly about the things that you've implemented in your business here? We're seeing real ball. Can you talk about how uh, you're using a CRM? The biggest question is how to use a CRM. Uh, you're using real ball. What are the plus and minuses of it? Sure. So I've been using Realvolve for years. Um, and what I like about Realvolve is that I can send targeted content out based on milestone dates in the transaction. So um, I basically have what are called workflows in Realvolve, which is targeted content for a specific group of people. So I have a workflow for like prospective buyers and prospective sellers. I have one for current buyers and current sellers. So people were actively either trying to find a home for doing showings with or for our sell side, people who were getting ready to put on the market or they're active on the market. Then we have our current or our under contract buyers, under contract sellers that gets them from contract to closing. And then we have our closed clients. Um, and so all that content goes out basically automatically to them um, based on where they are in the transaction. Um, and so, you know, if you don't have a CRM like that, this is a great time to get that set up um, so that you have it in place later. We have stopped a lot of our, um, our workflows for people because we really want the content to be very specific to what's happening in the market right now, which I think we'll talk about in a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, so I'd say this is a great time to get our CRM. I really like Realval um, because, you know, I can send an email out to a client that's like, hey, tomorrow's your inspection. Here's everything you need to know. And that goes out automatically. And then the day after the inspection, it sends another email out automatically saying, hey, your inspection was yesterday you're gonna get the inspection report tomorrow, here's everything you need to know. So it really takes all that transaction management off of my plate. And by turning off your the automated system, the automated messaging that you were doing, um, it, it makes people who are at home, they're stuck at home, they need that real, they, need, they need to see a release, right? They're, they're stressed out about everything, but they're stressed out about the real estate transaction, it makes them feel like at least that there's a customized experience that you're putting out there, right? By stopping the, the automated system, by putting a little more time into the uh, the content you're putting into their email for them. Yeah. And I should say like, we're still using our automated contact for our clients who are, um, we're currently doing showings with, uh, we've taken a few of those out and replaced them with more COVID specific content. And we're still using that content for our under contract clients. Again, we've taken some of that out and adapted it for COVID. Um, 
you know, but for like our prospective buyers and sellers, I just feel like nobody wants to be sold right now. Nobody wants to be pitched to. Um, and so we've really stopped those and we're only sending stuff to them. That's very COVID specific. Yep. Um, because I, you know, I hate getting an email that I can tell was written, you know, two months ago. That's just not applicable anymore. It's embarrassing. Um, so we wanted to shut that off. I'm getting a lot of referrals from people. Um, and so we have our ready to buy and ready to sell surveys, which you can check out on my website, shehada.com. Yeah, that's next to Railball right there. So that's, like, that's a Google form more than anything, right? Yeah. So um, you're using Google Suite for your, for your email which has been really streamlined, but now you're amping everything up with these surveys from Google Forms, right? Correct, yeah, and so Google Forms are great because they're free, so free is wonderful right now, um, and they're very easy to use. I am not techie, as my husband can attest, and you can sit down and hammer out a Google Form in about an hour, and then we had our website provider embed it on our website, but if you don't have a website, you can just send a link to the actual form, so what happens is, when I get a referral come in or somebody says they want to work with me, I say, great, you know, I'd love to set up a time to speak with you. We're doing um, Zoom calls now for those. Um, I have a quick survey I want you to fill out before we talk, and that'll make our time together more efficient. So it's essentially replacing, to some degree, buyer consultations and, and seller consultations. They fill out this whole survey in about 20 minutes, and it really deep dives into questions like, you know, what's your time frame for buying? Do you have a lease that, need, that is ending? Is anybody giving you gift money? Do you have kids? Do you need to be in a certain school district? You know, all that kind of stuff that sometimes you're uncomfortable to ask. Um, and I can look that over in five minutes and have a much better understanding of their buy or sell needs. Go deeper with these surveys, with these questionnaires. You, you know, get, get, their, get their, you know, do you have FaceTime? Do you have Skype? What would you rather use? All right, we're gonna talk about you know, Zoom in a second, but are you familiar with that? Go, go deeper with these questions. Um, basically do these, uh, uh, Fill this, the survey out as if you would be sitting next to your client so that you don't have to waste their time and your time sitting next to them asking them, asking them these questions. It'll, it's all online, on, preferably on your website, but you can do this over email. You can do this over really over almost any platform. Google Forms are fantastic. Uh, Zoom, you've been using uh, this whole idea about like uh, live open houses. Uh, that's weird, but we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, Matterport, that's now on every listing you've got. So Matterport, so we have been putting listings on the market during all of this. Um, and so we have our photographer come in. As soon as the photographer leaves, we have our Matterport uh, tour person come in and do the Matterport tour, do the photo shoot, or do the um, floor plan. And then as soon as they leave, I come in and I do like a 15 minute video walkthrough, which with this little camera on the bottom left. Yeah, bottom left hand about. corner is a DJI Osmo Pocket. Basically it's a uh, 4K shooting little video uh, recorder on a gimbal. So it's super smooth. Um, it plugs into your phone so you can do Facebook Live if you wanted to. You can do Zoom if you wanted to. Uh, it's actually made for, uh, for uh, skate punk kids, uh, but it's fantastic. Shoots really good quality videos. Uh, that you can use that you can upload uh, via your phone uh, and it's pretty inexpensive for 300 bucks right? yeah it's been great I mean so we've been doing you know the Matterport tour and the walkthrough because the Matterport tour obviously there's no audio but with this little camera um, I can talk and so it's just like I'm doing a showing so I'm walking through and pointing out all the features of the home it takes about two hours for us to do you know the Matterport the um, the, my video, the pictures, et cetera. So my clients are out of the house for those two hours. And then, you know, after that, we really have pretty much everything we need to do um, showings completely virtually if they don't want to have anybody in their house at that point. The nice thing I can do with the little camera too is um, there's an example of it on the screen next to the camera. I just stood in a corner of a room and kind of slowly panned around and I was able to put that on my Facebook page and our social media as like a sneak preview of an upcoming listing while we were waiting for the photos to come back. So it's good for those kinds of things as well. And note that, that uh, since you started doing these, the shorter the better, like 30 second sneak peeks have led to more views. And if you tell, if you market it, 30 second sneak peek, it, it actually tells people, hey, you're only in and out in 30 seconds, which is fantastic. Uh, you're amping up your ad work spending, which has been interesting. Yeah. I didn't know this. Yeah. So we, um, we've we obviously This is stopped, a branding thing. Yeah. So we've obviously stopped all um, postcards. We've all, we used to mail postcards with festivals on them. You know, we've obviously stopped that. I feel like people just don't want mail at the moment because they're worried about germs. So we're not doing any mailings anymore. Um, and so we took that money instead and we've upped our AdWorks advertising. So if you're not familiar with AdWorks, it's essentially like if you go online to buy a pair of boots, but you don't buy those boots. And now as you're on the internet, those boots are stalking you all around the internet. I can do that same thing with my face and be creepy and stalk my clients all the way around the internet. 
Um, so what, why we increased our um, ad work spend was that we saw um, a lot of our clients were reaching out and being like, hey, I just saw you, you know, I just saw your ad online and we've been doing AdWorks advertising for years and I don't usually get a lot of feedback from it, but I think people are so online right now um, and they're, they are craving that human connection. So when they see your face, it's just much more recognizable. So we were getting flooded with people saying they saw us online. So we figured, gosh, this is really working right now. It's just a good way to keep you top of mind. Um, and so we really increased our ad work spend. It used to be that people were seeing us five times a month and we increased it. So now they're seeing us 10 times a month. And that is an NAR member benefit. So you can get a discount if you look up um, AdWorks and AR member benefit, you get extra impressions through them. Yep. Uh, and I think the biggest thing too is that your website now has become your, your hub for all things information, right? So you've added uh, information on selling COVID, right? Uh, the, folks have been reading this, right? It's, it's part of your email and your, um, uh, your, your cold and warm lead um, communications, correct? Yeah, I mean, because people really want to know, like, if they're interested in selling, you know, I'm getting a lot of phone calls from sellers who are like, hey, I want to put my place on the market with you, but how does this work? How do I do this right now, you know? And so it's a long, uh, you know, it's a long page on our website, but we basically explained how we're doing the whole process from start to finish, how we're doing consultations, how we're doing um, showings to keep everybody safe, how we're doing, you know, walkthroughs, home inspections, closings, all of those kinds of things to give them a better understanding of how this process works. And this is evolving and changing, you know, like the text that is on here is very different now than it was even four weeks ago during the shelter in place as we have evolved and figured out better processes for things. And so, you know, this page will continue to evolve as the situation changes. And we're using this in our marketing, sending it out to our sphere being like, if you're thinking of buying and selling, we've put together these guides for you to answer a lot of questions for you about how this is going to work. Um, cause that seems to really be the big question from people. They just can't quite wrap their brain around how, how do they do showings? You know, how do they do an inspection? All those kinds of things to so start getting that content out there to people. And this is, this is the part where this takes a lot of time for folks, but I, I can't stress enough that this is a strategy that every agent and brokerage that I, that I talk to, that we chat with, everyone is talking about content. What kind of content is working? Uh, what is relevant? How are you doing things in your systems and processes? And that outward show to your potential clients and your current clients and your past clients, guys, through a really good, useful website, y you need this. It doesn't need to be a website. It could be your presence online someplace. It could be a blog. It could be any number of things, but get, you got to get out there beyond your listings. This is the reason why uh, iBuyers a year ago were thriving. And now when it comes to uh, the unknown, when it comes to this COVID stuff, this is this is the stuff that people are looking for right now who are looking to buy and sell within the next month or six months. Um, if you're looking at the stats that I've been talking about for a while, six months to a year for people to reach out to you, you need content to, to fill in the blanks. NAR said in their last NAR buyer seller profile that it's taking 10 weeks for people to when they start thinking about seriously buying and selling for them to reach out to an agent. 10 weeks, okay? So fill in the blanks with a really good content strategy. I don't care how you do it but you need to get out there beyond listings. And I know you told me when I first got started, two and three people research you extensively before they decide yep. to hire you as a realtor. And I think, you know, the reason that I've been so successful is I have so much content online. And so when they research me, it's very specific content that educates them on the market. Like if I get one more email from a company I did business with 20 you know, years ago, that's like, Hey, you know, make sure you wash your hands a lot. Like that's not helpful to me. You know, you'll see if you go onto my website, that's selling during COVID. It's very specific. It talks about exactly how we're doing showings, mm -hmm. touchless showings. It talks about exactly how we're doing inspections, that only an inspector is allowed to come, that they can, you know, FaceTime the buyer afterward to go through the report with them, right? It's not just like, hey, wash your hands. Like, this is the nitty gritty details of how we do it. I think that's what people want to know right now. So let's talk about current clients. Um, you know, a lot of these we've already hit right now, you know, uh, talking about options. You know, I think the, the uh, I think the biggest one that we talk, we've been talking about over the last couple of weeks is the mortgage markets have, have, um, have really kind of <laughs> petered out. Uh, it's really going not uh, going into a deep dive with information with not only buyers but their the people they're relying on as well, right? Yeah. And so what we did was we went through you know as the mark mortgage market started to change and you know like in you know in our area um, renovation loans are pretty much gone. Uh, you know, it's really hard to get a jumbo loan if you're not putting down 20% now, you know, and the interest rates on the jumbo loans are like four and a half percent, you know, 
I think that the 3% loan programs, it sounds like those are going to go away soon. You know, so we really went through each of our clients and reached out to the lender and said, you know, does this program still exist? And what is their interest rate now? Because interest rates have been all over the place. And we prioritized, I had a client who needed to buy um, because their lease was going to be up and needed to use a 3% loan program. And so we prioritized getting that person under contract first and getting their loan locked because we didn't think that that program was going to exist much longer. And so we've been really prioritizing our clients by who needs to move now who, who's going to be homeless if they don't and let's focus our energy on them and whose loan programs do we think are going to go away or be in danger and try to get them under contract before that loan program goes away um, we've also been moving some of our clients to you know suggesting they go to other lenders because all of the margin calls that have been happening um, you know where banks don't have the money to fund all the loans that they have anymore and so they're you know at the closing table and it can't fund them anymore um, you know, or you have clients where now they don't have a credit score that qualifies for a loan anymore. So we've been really deep diving with every lender and being like, you know, let's look at any potential problems that this buyer could have, um, you know, that could prevent us from getting them to closing and let's figure out how to work around that so we can still have them buy or sell. Um, and, you know, in clients who didn't need to move until the fall, you know, we put their search on hold for a couple of weeks and now we've kind of regrouped back up with them to figure out, you know, do they feel comfortable going out and doing showings now or what do they want? I do. It's a good opportunity for uh, for a Zoom account. Um, I, I actually rec would recommend uh, getting a Zoom account. You have a Zoom account now, right? Uh, the free ones are okay, but you run the risk of, of Zoom bombs and all that other stuff. But um, but buying and getting an account, how much are you spending on Zoom? $15 right a month. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is a really good opportunity to do to do Zoom calls that you, that you can not only uh, 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 administer, but record as well. Um, if you want to get, have your mortgage people, your inspectors, all these guys all in on one Zoom call, because everyone and their mother seems to be using Zoom right now. Zoom is a verb. Zoom became a verb in a month. So uh, think about that uh, for a little bit. Um, you know, there's some questionnaires that are coming out. Now, this is where I would ask you to rely on your brokerage, uh, because, you know, Shay's brokerage here, because Chicago's a little bit of a hot zone, um, has amped up their, uh, their questionnaires. But, you know, engage with, uh, with your brokerage. Uh, Minnesota and your local associations um, at, 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 uh, in Minnesota have some really good general counsels you can talk to. Because um, this is going to be kind of a weird thing, the whole question, are you healthy? Do you, have you talked to anybody? Contact tracing, all this other stuff. But, um, you know, it, it, folks pretty quickly became okay with like, hey, I'm good, right? Yeah, we haven't had any issues. We are required by our brokerage to um, have a health questionnaire filled out before we are allowed to do any in-person showings with everyone who yeah. attends. And in our market, the governor has mandated no more than four people can attend a showing at a time, including the buyer's agent. So um, everyone who's attending has to fill out the health questionnaire before we can show the property. Um, and it has basically a hold harmless on it. Um, and we are asking a series of questions. Are those in here that we'll go over? Yeah. 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 You just make sure that, you know, you, you know, when, when things about health comes up, um, talk to your association. Right. And your brokerage. Your, your brokerage, your, the GADs in Minnesota and at your local associations are fantastic. Reach out to them. Uh, touch the showings. You're bringing gloves for everyone, or are you recommending that they do that now? Yeah. Um, so, so what we're doing? Mask, yeah, we're stuff. doing touchless showings. Um, so we um, we talked to our sellers and basically said, uh, you know, you have the right to require whatever you want to require. It's your house. Um, and so, you know, our sellers um, said that they wanted to require that everyone wear masks and gloves in their house. And now that's been mandated by the the governor starting on Friday that everybody has to wear masks. Um, so we are asking in our confirmations that, you know, everybody has to wear a mask, they have to wear gloves, um, they have to put booties on their shoes. And so we dropped off booties at every property and those are outside the front door so they can put those on before they come in. Um, we're asking them to provide their own mask and gloves just because I don't have access to that much stuff. And, um, and we're doing touchless showings. So we are asking our sellers to leave on all lights. Um, open all closet doors, all bedroom doors, all bathroom doors. And we are telling the buyer's agent that they are only allowed to touch the front and back door handles, um, that they are not allowed to touch anything else in the property. Um, that if there's something specific ahead of time that they think their client's going to want to see inside, like the, you know, the pantry, uh, you know, I don't know, the cabinets on the kitchen or something, then my client will leave all those open as well. But um, we're really trying to be very careful about minimizing what they touch in the properties to make our clients feel more comfortable. And we haven't had any pushback. Everybody here very much understands um, that that's sort of the new norm. Um, this is where Matterport comes into play. Uh, Matterport has really ramped up their, uh, their user experience on it. Um, 
what used to be as, as recently as six months ago, just a walk, a virtual walkthrough of homes. You can now actually go in guys and, and measure floors, measure walls. You didn't even know that they did this, right? Um, so you can get a lot done in a Matterport tour, whether you're using Matterport or any of the 3D uh, virtual tours you can do now, I, I would recommend using something, but Matterport has done a really good job with amping up their product line and their features. Um, you know, there are other options out there. You can get a Ricoh Theta camera that does 360 tours, uh, you know, do, do something, but think about not your convenience, but how you're going to lend convenience for your sellers and potential buyers of a home to minimize the amount of people uh, in a listing, which frankly, I think we all can be okay with that. You know, a couple less looky-loos, totally. people wasting your time, um, more, more folks going in who, are, who mean business. Um, agents, brokerages, consumers now are all very receptive for that. Using, using Spark property, single property sites, that's adobe.spark.com. Um, uh, using uh, Spark for that, you've been liking that? Yeah, it's been great, you know, for, you know, that way I can, on that one Spark site for each property, I can put on there the Matterport tour, I can put on there the 15 minute, you know, walkthrough video, I can put on there the floor plan, I can put on there all of the photos, you know, and we're really making sure that we photograph everything in the house, much more so than what we did in the past. So we're photographing the ugly areas, you know, like we're photographing the laundry closet, you know, the laundry uh, room, we're photographing the attic, you know, storage closets, you know, all those kinds of things that we wouldn't have photographed more. I feel like the more photos, the better. Um, and we're putting that all of that on that single property site. So then we can send it to the buyer's agent and say, you know, before you're allowed to do a showing, we want to make sure your client has reviewed all of this and make sure that it's a good fit. That's adobe.spark.com. Carrie's asking, uh, disposable gloves have been difficult to come by. Um, it's been a problem with you. I think you, you're hoarding these things the moment it became kind of an issue about two months ago, right? Yeah, but I mean, that's why I'm not providing <laughs> them for showings I'm taking them if it's my buyer I take gloves um, but I'm asking if on my if I'm on the listing agent I'm saying you have to wear gloves and you have to wear um, you know you have to wear a mask I haven't gotten any pushback from anybody saying their clients didn't have those yeah so they, I guess they have been uh, easier to come by yeah um, I know, just ordered some like 10 days ago I got more where'd you get them from Amazon Amazon Amazon's been good okay uh, let's keep going here. Virtual showings, talk about Zoom, uh, Facebook Live. Uh, you know, Facebook Live, I don't understand too much. Uh, 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 you need to have a massive Facebook audience. Like, I've got 5,000 friends on Facebook, but I can pretty much guarantee you that none of them care about Facebook Live open houses. But um, if you're doing it off of your, your, your Facebook business page, like what you did with your videos, mm -hmm. it's a great place to, um, uh, to amp up your AdWorks account. And, and frankly, it's a, it's, a, it's a potential advertising medium for that. Uh, what else have you been using Zoom and Facebook for for your virtual showings? Well, we've been, I mean, some of our sellers haven't been comfortable having anybody come into their house, you know, because some of our listings were on the market before all of this happened, and I didn't have videos for those properties, right? So we've asked our seller to go through with yep. their iPhone and make a video, like, you know, one video per floor, and then I've been helping them upload them so that we at least have those um, to give to people. Um, you know, we've been asking um, before we'll confirm a showing, is there anything specific your client wants to see in the property? Because we can make a video of that and send it to you before we do an in-person showing. Um, we've also been hosting Zoom sessions where if a buyer wants to come and see our listing, but they don't feel comfortable coming in person, we've been asking our um, either I'll go to the property and Zoom them through, or if my client, I have some elderly clients, they don't want anybody in their house. They're not comfortable with that. Um, so we've been putting them on, they've been going on Zoom and just walking through the house with the camera. I've been on Zoom with the buyer and the buyer's agent. And we've been, I've been giving all of the commentary about the property. I did three of those on Monday. I think the thing to know about those is they take a long time, like plan 45 minutes to an hour for each of those showings. Um, but those have been very effective. I think in-person showings that we're seeing are much more quality. Like, you know, I have a number of properties I put on and two of them, we've only done one showing, in-person showing, and both of those went under contract from that one showing because they're just better quality showings right now. Um, if your client's going to shoot a video, I would recommend sharing a Dropbox folder with them. Uh, you can, everyone seems to be using Dropbox as well because it's integrating into Zoom. So what's cool about it is that you, um, once you share that folder, they can create, they can create their videos and then upload them directly to a shared folder that you've got so you're not wasting time with emails and things like that. 
Uh, it's a really good way to, to have them send you uh, big files as well. And I would say do a couple minute practice session with them first because they walk too fast. So tell them stand in each corner of the room, slowly pan the room and then walk along the edges of the room when they're walking so that people can see stuff and that they need to go a lot slower than they think they're going to need to go. This is an example of the emails before showings. Um, you know, this, this gets asked, but Shay, you want to talk about what it is that you're asking them? Yeah, so this quickly? is a template email. Anytime a showing request comes in for an in-person showing, this is what I send to the buyer's agent, just asking them, have they watched the Matterport 3D tour and video walkthrough in the MLS, as well as looked at all the photos? Um, have they read the, all the disclosures? We're requiring that. Um, we want to make sure that they are ready and willing to write an offer on the day that they come and see the property, that they're not just looky loose. Um, do they need to sell a home in order to buy a home? Um, and then if there's anything funky about the property that we know is going to turn people off, like this one is next to a towing company. You know, I want to make sure they know that before they come so they don't come and walk in the door and go, oh, I don't want to live here. And then, you know, we've, we've subjected our potential, you know, our client to germs and stuff. We're also requiring a copy, a copy of their pre-approval letter and proof of liquid funds because, you know, my concern is if they have funds in the stock market and they tank, they may not want to buy that property anymore. So I want to make sure those funds are liquid. And then they do have to fill out the COVID-19 form that our brokerage is requiring. And in here, we're putting the instructions, no more than four people, booties are outside the front door, they have to wear, you know, gloves, masks, et cetera. So everything is very straightforward. And I haven't been getting any pushback on this. You know, people understand, um, you know, that this is, this is what we have to do to keep everybody safe now. Um, and note the bottom, bottom part of this email. Uh, we will never provide you with instructions to wire money via email. Guys, fraud is still an issue. Uh, n notice that that's the only thing that's the pretty little uh, 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 graphic on the email. That thing gets a lot of clicks. That goes directly back to Shay's website uh, on cyber fraud because that's still gonna happen, folks, especially right now as we go into, into markets where e-notarizations, at-home closings, that's still gonna be a thing. Um, you still have to tell people about, hey, here's what's happening out there when it comes to cyber fraud. It's been much more of a problem than normal. We just had a buyer, not mine, but somebody else in my brokerage lost $50,000 last week to wire fraud. Um, and so we're seeing that it's- Because more and more people are doing it's this It's on the rise. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So that's one of the things we're really hammering uh, with our um, under contract clients right now is wire fraud and talking to them about that regularly and how to prevent it because it's on the rise so much right now. Okay, so real quickly, some new clients, Zoom consults, we're doing, how does this all work now? You're putting all this on your website, right? Website is a reference. You have sellers and buyers right now who are reaching out to you to do homework. We can talk about what that homework means. Yeah, so I have a lot of sellers I was planning to put on the market in March and when they have decided um, that they don't want to go on the market right now. And so I'm giving them homework to do. So we're zooming through their house and I'm saying, okay, let's do a whole nother round of decluttering to make it look even better. You know, I want you to order sh shrubs from the garden center and have them delivered. I want you to plant new shrubs outside. I want you to do touch up painting, you know, with paint you already have in the house. Can you caulk? You know, what things can we do? I have a seller right now who's painting her bathroom vanities white, you know, instead of oak. Like, you know, so depending on the skill level of the seller, I'm really trying to figure out how they can do home improvement projects to increase the value of their home, you know. So changing light fixtures, you know, if they're handy to do those types of things just to get it in better home ready shape. Because what I'm really seeing right now with our listings is my listings that are up to date and move in ready are still selling quickly. Mm -hmm. My listings that are a project, nobody wants a project right now because they don't want to bring people into the home to get work done and get quotes. And they don't want to put that outlay of cash. So the more I can get those properties updated, the faster they're selling and for more money. So I'm giving sellers that kind of homework to do. Yeah. Homework. Really kind of cool uh, uh, a concept when you think about it, right? You base everything off your site uh, for more information, but you, you're constantly telling people, hey, this is the reality of the market. Kind of that, that's like the third uh, bullet there, right? You got to be honest right now and give people the reality of it. There, there aren't, even now, there aren't really a lot of good deals, right? Uh, things are still selling more quickly. I think the sense of urgency has even gotten more so with some folks, depending on where they are in their life. Um, but being honest about the market, guys, uh, Minnesota's got some of the best market analytics people in the country, in that state. Use the stats, man. If you're, a Min if you're a Minneapolis member, go talk to David Arbit and put him on Zoom and have him talk about the market and have a third person there say, hey, you know what? There's not a lot of deals out there. Homes are still moving. They can give you that analysis that you need. Process of just, we talked about that already. But, right, uh, you know, having, going deeper right now is okay. And you're seeing that, right? And I think that giving homework to your clients makes them feel like they're doing something productive 
right now where a lot of people just feel like they're free falling and they don't know what to do. And it also gives you something to check in with them about, you know, like I check in every week and say, how's it coming with the painting? How's it coming with the shrubs? You know, like, so it makes them feel like they're moving forward in a time where a lot of people feel like they're at a standstill. Yep. Pretty good stuff there. So let's talk about some pivots, right? So th these are kind of things that you're dealing with now. Maybe you're thinking about after this kind of ends, thinking about fall into next year, right? Um, here's some advice, Shay, you wanted to talk about that you wanted to, like, here's what you should do, right? Yeah, so I think the thing for us is we've really pivoted our social media in particular to try to have it be more helpful for clients. So we've been answering hot button topics. So I, um, you know, I've been doing Zoom interviews with people. So for instance, you know, we did a Zoom interview with our health insurance broker to talk about if you're laid off, what do you do for health insurance for your family? Like, where can you find health insurance? What does it cost for a single person versus a couple versus a family on average? Um, you know, all of those kinds of things. And I put that out on my social media and I had a great response to that. And people actually said, you know, I love that you as a realtor, you know, are doing something that has nothing to do with real estate, but is trying to help us. Like people really appreciated that, right? So we interviewed that person. We've interviewed our uh, financial planner to talk about what they're seeing in the stock market, what their advice is for people right now. We interviewed a lender to talk about, I'm getting tons of questions about, should I refinance right now? So we wanted to answer that questions online. So we're putting that on our social media, but then we're also sending it out to our sphere. Um, you know, so think about people that are, experts in different areas that your clients have questions about and interview those people and put them online. Um, the other thing that we've been doing is really sending out content about how people can save money right now. I mean, that's everybody's concern. So we went through, you know, all of our past clients, we looked up their taxes, their property taxes online, and we looked to see who hadn't appealed their taxes, who didn't have a homeowner's exemption, who had a refund owed to them. And we emailed them and said, hey, look, I just found that you're owed $1,500 from, from the city. Here's how you collect that money. You don't have a property exemption. Here's how you file for that. And for most of our clients, we were able to find some money. We, we found say. that we double paid. We, right? we double paid. <laughs> we found that we were owed like $6,000. Um, which we didn't know. And so my clients have been very appreciative of that. We've also been sending out um, other ways to save money in terms of, um, you know, like the deadline for filing for your homeowner's exemption was coming up. So how do they do that? You know, um, so just different ways to save money right now have been really popular posts that we've but been emailing out. Either way, this is a great way to leverage your partners, right? You humanize not only yourself, but your partners as well, right? Your online networking group, whether or not you're, you're, you're networking online or using their, the relationships outwardly towards consumers. Good idea. It's working for you. Yeah. And so we, we created a networking group, you know, so we reached out to like, you know, a lender, a health insurance person, a financial planner, a divorce attorney, um, you know, anybody that you can think of who's in a referral based business, all those people need business right now. And so we're doing zoom meetings once a month to be like, okay, you know, how can we help grow each other's businesses? You know, I, you know, who do you know that needs a realtor? And you know, my contractor, I'm sending him referrals, right? So, you know, this is a time I think to do those online networking, you know, kind of create your own BNI essentially that's free. It doesn't cost anything. You hop on once a month and you can help support each other's businesses right now. People are really into that at the moment and that's helped us fill our pipeline and bring in new people. Um, and yeah. the plus with this is that you, you're, you're, you're floating the boat with a lot of folks who are going to streamline the system, streamline the experience before, during, and after the transaction, right? So right. No, no matter what, if, if, if COVID comes back and this becomes a thing again, you're prepared. But frankly, you're saving a lot of people, saving a lot of people time uh, by doing this online, offline, how they would see it. Uh, with folks who are trained in this because it's not about just using Zoom, it's how you use Zoom correctly, right? Which is what goes to fine-tuning your systems, fine-tuning it now, right? Yeah. What, what's the one thing that you hear from your, from some of your, like, your, your networks, your coaching folks around the country? What's the one thing that they all need to do with their CRM that uh, they haven't done? Well, I mean, use it, first of all, like most of the time they, they don't have one. They're, I do a lot of coaching of, of real estate agents around the country. You know, they don't have a CRM. They're not using it. But even the ones who do, very few have any sort of automated system to send emails out to clients based on where they are in the transaction. You know, so I've been working with all my coaching clients right now, and this is the time to get that into place and yeah. work on those systems so that when the market comes back, which, I, you know, I, it will, I mean, I'm already seeing that increase in showings in our market in the last week, you're prepared at that point. 
point to handle that volume, right? Um, it's also a great way to save money. Like, you know, I, I did 98 transactions last year and I have a part-time transaction coordinator who works 15 hours a week for me. And I, I'm able to handle that volume of transactions because I'm so organized with my CRM and transaction management. Yeah, preparing for the fence up demand, I think is something that we all should be uh, figuring out. Yeah. Well, I do, I, 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 you know, I had a conversation with an agent in Ohio yesterday who is, um, you know, they got their, they, they spent a lot of time doing the Harvard online course, which is great, but you know, that doesn't fill the pipeline for business, right? right. So when you're, uh, when you're thinking about your passion, thinking about business, what you want to start thinking about right now, in my mind, is how you're going to deal with the influx of business coming forward. Because even if you're kind of, kind of dabbling in all this and you're out there enough, you're going to get these phone calls. You're going to get these inquiries, especially if you're a listing agent right now, you're putting houses on the market, you're going to get these, uh, these inquiries about your listings. Start figuring out what you're going to do with these folks now and how you're going to come with the helpfulness, which is going to be scalable and future proof no matter what. I would disagree with that slightly. I think it's the people who are out there putting good content out there who will get the, those, you know, those leads and those phone calls. I think if you're just sitting at home and you've shut off from the world and you're not reaching out to your clients, you're going to kind of be forgotten about. I think you have to be front and center in a helpful manner, you know, and I know like one of the things we did was we've been doing no contact pop by gifts. And so like, I know in my area, Girl Scouts weren't able to sell their cookies. Oh, yeah. And so I bought 400 boxes of Girl Scouts and we texted Girl Scout, Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> Sorry, not Girl Scouts. Oh, that'd be awful. Awkward. Girl Scout cookies. Um, and you know, texted all my clients and said, Hey, we're going to be running around town. We're going to drop off three boxes at your door, Co you know, contact less. If you want some Girl Scout cookies, let me know what your favorite box, you know, your favorite kinds are when we just leave them outside. And 75% of my clients wrote back and, um, you know, and said, yes, they'd love them. And so we dropped them out front and some, you know, never wrote back. I'm sure they were freaked out about the idea of us leaving stuff at their door and that's totally fine. You know? So, you know, we're thinking about doing things like that. We're probably this summer going to do um, the porch photos and hire a photographer to go around to all of our clients and do the front porch photos with safe social distancing. Yeah, that's been a good idea. You know, um, we're doing Mother's Day flowers that we're going to leave in a vase outside of all the homes of our mom clients because um, it's going to be a tough Mother's Day this year, right? So think about, you know, some things that you can do that are contactless, you know, for some Popeyes. And I don't think, you know, not to, you know, dish on or Brian Buffini, but like, you know, leaving a little note with a, you know, a smarty, like no one cares about that, right? I think it has to be something substantial. So even if you just do it, if you only have the money to do it for your A clients, you know, who give you a lot of referral business, that's fine. But I think it has to feel like it's something substantial that you're leaving out front that they're getting value from. Yeah, something that's different. Being, now it's a good time to be memorable in a good way, uh, be useful in a good way, be helpful in a good way. Because uh, frankly, it's just, it's everything you locked up in your guys' brains that can, that can really do this and leverage everything that your association and your brokerages are offering right now because you all have some of the best there. I've been all around the country and I see it everywhere, okay? So uh, that said, we have got uh, four minutes. If anybody has any questions, uh, we put them in the chat. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, I got three minutes of questions I can ask you if you wanna do that. Sure, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Lori, I don't know if you got any questions coming in from email, uh, but hey, are you looking forward to hanging out with these guys? Because we're going to their convention. Yeah, that'll be great. Yeah, and it'll, it'll be interesting to see kind of how things have changed, you know, at that point going forward. And I think that's it's really, a yeah, right? I think that's really the thing. It's you just have to be adaptable right now. And you have to be kind of every week looking at your business and being like, okay, what, what do I need to change to stay relevant? And like, what content do my clients need right now? Like, what questions do they have? Yeah, I think the big thing that I've been seeing as a non-realtor, right, seeing the, seeing the consumer uh, mindset go, um, there's a lot of people looking to get out of the city. Uh, I'll tell you right now, there's one thing that, that I know you're looking into is how to help people escape the city and go into the suburbs or yep. other states, other markets, yep. right? This is Chicago. Minnesota is only six hours away, depending on traffic. Um, now's a good time to set up your network as well with other agents. So if you're a CRS, WCR, YPN, any of those guys, start to, to network with your agents at the regional level, at least, across the country. Because to me... Um, as more and more companies get okay with their with their uh, employees telecommuting, I think you're going to see a lot of folks do that. I know personally people who have been telecommuting <laughs> telecommuting from their lake homes uh, uh, in Wisconsin into their businesses in uh, into their into their companies in downtown Chicago. It's been amazing to watch. I know somebody's telecommuting from Florida into their into their company. So. 
I, I think that is a trend that you're going to see as especially, I mean, commercial real estate people, um, you know, I feel for you, but you know, there's going to be some pretty big impact with commercial real estate stuff. I'm also seeing more um, requests from my clients for referrals to uh, realtors in like lake home areas yep. um, because they, they don't feel comfortable flying anywhere right now, but they want to have some place to go that's like a vacation home. So I think that's going to also be a good niche for people to have are those kinds of things. But I'm definitely seeing a huge increase in people wanting to move to the burbs. Uh, right now. And so we're really like, we're working on building a, a website that's like moved to the North shore, you know, um, that's really going to be targeted at um, reaching people in the city who want to move to the suburbs. And so we're putting a, a lot of content on there about the different neighborhoods in the North shore, what the schools are like, all that kind of stuff to really try to be that go-to person for them. What are you doing over the next couple of weeks uh, for content as, as May seems to be the t target to open up here. What will you be doing over the next couple of weeks? You know, I think, you know, what we put into place in terms of like that, you know, selling in COVID-19, we're going to start to do a lot more outreach to our clients about, um, we've seen, a you know, talking to them about like the Zillow stats that I saw yesterday. I want to send that out to my clients today and my sphere to be like, you know, we've seen a huge increase in the number of showings in the last week. Um, you know, that I think people are feeling like this is the new norm going forward now. And so let's get back to business and find properties. And so, you know, if you were planning to wait and put your property on the market after the shelter in place ended, don't get it on the market now, if you're comfortable having people in your property. And this is how we're going to do that and keep that safe. Because I think everybody was waiting for shelter in place to end thinking that life would just go back to normal and it's not right. So I think now we just need to push our clients to get back on the market and do so in a safe manner. So that's really what we're going to be focusing on for our marketing in the next week. For referrals, what's a good referral uh, marketing solution for you? What do you mean? What's, what's a great way to read one thing to do to reach out to get referrals from your previous sphere? Get, get testimonials right now. Like yeah. I would be reaching out. We use Real Satisfied. So um, so we've gone through all the people in the past couple of weeks who haven't left us reviews and we've been reaching out to them, asking them to give us reviews on Real Satisfied, on Yelp, on Zillow, you know, because those people who have kids are probably not going to have time to do it. But if you have people who are sitting at home without any kids, they're probably looking for stuff to do. Um, so this is a great time to get referrals. All right. This is Shay's information. You can Google me. I'm online. Uh, hopefully I can talk about my new gig soon. But um, guys, we are looking forward to hanging out with you guys in September. We're going to bring our kid. He has not burned down the house yet, which is fantastic. In the past hour. <laughs> <laughs> we're looking forward to hanging out with you guys in September. Uh, it'll be kind of a homecoming for us. We're looking forward to it. Right? Be great. Yep. Lori, are we good? We are good. And we are so excited to see you in September. Um, of course, especially Oliver, but um, excited to see you too as well. <laughs> but yeah, we're good. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks. guys. Bye, everybody. See ya. Have a great day.